Oops. I think I forgot to detach my headset. Uh oh. Hang on, you guys. Technical difficulties. All right, you guys. So, the answer to the question. Hi, guys. Hi, Carrie. Hello. Hi, Kachal. Hi, Jen. All right. So, I wanted to answer the question. You know, um, the big argument that everyone has, you know, is it necessary to love yourself to manifest a loving relationship? Um, I Here's the answer to that. This is the easiest thing. The law of reverse effort proves that no, you technically don't have to love yourself to manifest someone to love you, okay? That's, that can happen. And, and the reason this happens, okay, the reason this happens is because the person providing the least effort will have the other one exert more effort and this symbiotic relationship will still take place. However, here's the bottom line. Do you remember what I said that um, in non-duality, the answer is found because you understand that everything is you, right? So in reality, we are not rejecting an experience. We're not rejecting people. We are rejecting aspects of ourselves. It's always our experience that's on display. So at the end of the day, we're still in a relationship with ourselves, nothing else and so when we don't love ourselves we're incapable of receiving this love so what ends up happening is one person goes out of their way to bend over backwards to prove something and the other person doesn't appreciate it at all can't even see it doesn't understand it isn't isn't appreciating what they, why because they don't understand what love is so they have no idea what to appreciate Another scenario that can be very boring is it requires little effort on your part and so you don't know what to do with it, so you don't appreciate it in the moment. So again, you're still bored. You will still have this union, but it's not a union that is fully uh, balanced or equally yoked until you love yourself. When you truly, truly love yourself, I want to say this, this is the aspect of you that becomes everyone's dream man, everyone's dream girl. This aspect of yourself, when you're fully accepting of your experience of, of, of everything that you've been through, of every single moment of your life, you're totally at peace with everything. You don't reject it in any kind of way. You, you appreciate even the most painful things because you know what? If they hadn't happened, you wouldn't be you, right? So like when the fire in your eyes gets turned on because you look at yourself and you still appreciate all of those things, those experiences, right? When you know that the most important thing is your state of being, how you're, how you're treating everything. You know everything is you. This is the hack, right? That's when you appreciate the love that's being shown. That's when you really truly can see yourself, when you can recognize yourself in the mirror. That's when you understand that no matter what you do to another person, you will automatically do it to yourself. So say for example, I'll use myself as an example. Say, say that I did the most inconsiderate thing and um, didn't treat um, didn't treat someone's birthday like it was a big deal and I got in an argument with them on that day. Like, let's just say that's what I did. What will happen at some point in my life, whether they mean to or not, we will get in an argument again, except it'll be my birthday, just so that I can know what it feels like. It's an understanding that no matter what you think you are doing to someone else, you are doing it to yourself. When you really, truly come to peace with that, when you really come to terms with that, it changes the game and you're able to appreciate love when you have it.
because that's the thing. When we have it and we don't love ourselves, when we don't recognize it, when we're rejecting aspects of ourselves, when we're pushing something away, we don't realize that we're doing this to ourselves. It's our experience we're rejecting. There is no one else. You're not really in a relationship with anyone but yourself. But when you are at peace with that, when you are totally at peace with that, when you're in love with everything you are, I'm telling you there is a fire that gets turned on in your eyes. And there's a there's a smile, there's a confidence, there's a, I don't know how to explain it, but it's hot. It's sexy. You, you, you felt it when you've been in the presence of people that have this about them because you want to be around them. You want to be near them. You, 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 you're like, what kind of witchcraft is this? What is this guy that has this spell over me? Or what is this gal that has this spell over me? What is this mysterious force? The, the way that you experience that mysterious force, right, is to understand what it's showing you on both sides of the house. You are that. So the shortcut is, and this is why I'm telling you, is it possible to manifest people when you don't love yourself to love you? Yes. Is it a balanced union? Absolutely not. It's going to be several different experiences, but not anything that's balanced at all. It, it's a very painful experience, especially for the other side of the house. And eventually what happens to that person is eventually, eventually, they will fall in love for the, to the, with the person that does exactly all of the things that they did to someone else. You know, that when they were in that situation, you don't realize that everything is you. So the shortcut is love yourself, love your experiences, accept them, don't reject them. Okay. And when you understand that everything is you, you have no division. You have no division in yourself, right? You bridge the divide. Okay. When you have that, if you're trying to manifest a loved one, when that when that is bridged, you and your person will be so in sync, you read each other's minds, okay? You dream about each other and the other person feels it immediately. You're so freaking connected that you share a body, okay? You can trade bodies. I, I, I don't have any other way to describe this. It's, it's the most incredible incredible thing when you realize that you're the constant and that bodies are illusions however you are there to experience things you are the only absolute truth in it and when you become that love that type of love you are so free you are not looking outside of you for any sort of validation that's the magic sauce that's the magic sauce that turns it on where when you say I am everybody's dream girl. I'm everybody's dream guy. That I am state that really that 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 thing you can't describe that you can't stay away from. You just know that this is your person, right? That feeling. If you want to be that person that emits that frequency, you need to be at peace with yourself. Because that's the only thing that's on display. That's the great good, that's the great big cosmic joke. There's nothing else out there but your experience. You are looking at a reflective surface in which you get to see your thoughts real time on display. And so your thoughts and what you think is the world outside is one seamless whole, one whole thing. They go together. They are not separate in any way, shape, or form. So whatever story you're telling, that is what's animating the characters. So literally, when you have this understanding, when you truly get this, right? Now, you're very amused by the dynamics of the two bodies. But it's like you're watching this movie and you're watching yourself as the cause and effect. But you don't create a divide between these two people. You understand that what you're learning to do is accept yourself and your experiences and you're learning and you're teaching your reflection how to love. You're still responsible for this 3D experience. But when you're participating, you're going to show up differently. You're going to show up so differently. And this power, it, it emits from you. It emits from you. And then people 
naturally want to be around it because they want to know what's that secret sauce like how am, how how do i get peaceful how do i get trustful how do i how do i trust in who i am how do i make peace with that how would i love that because if you figured that out i need to i need some of that and people want to be around that so that's what I mean when you when I say when you love yourself, you're everybody's dream man or dream girl. That's what I mean is like that I am state. That's a real state that is fostered by not rejecting any of your experience. Try to understand how it shows up in the mirror. OK, let's think about this for a second. If I don't perceive value in something or I haven't noticed something, perf you know, I haven't seen it as as something that's positive, right? When it appears, okay, in another person, it's going to be what? It's going to be a trigger. It has to be a trigger. It must play out, right? Because this is how the mirror must serve me. It must show me what I need to correct in myself so that I can see a better image. But you have to understand love only reflects what you are so we cannot get mad at the mirror for showing up the way that it does meaning that like a cat in the mirror right a cat if a, if you you can always tell a grumpy cat because the grumpy cat naturally growls at the mirror right it's quite amusing when you see them because that cat really thinks there's another cat on the other side of that mirror and it it, it's growling at it right it's it's so cute and yet that's what we do as a human race when we forget that everything outside is simply our reflected self and that's why it provides endless entertainment for God in you and you watch the play from that perspective but when you have that understanding it's a very different way in how you interact so the answer, the reason why there's such um, dissonance between the two schools of thought is this. Both are correct. Yes, you can manifest someone to do that because through the law of reverse effort, that is absolutely true. And because the reason I know this is because when I wasn't in love with my own experience, but I was very self-protective of myself, okay, I drew all kinds of people who adored and worshipped me, but I was incapable of appreciating them for them at all because I didn't recognize myself in them at all. Love did not recognize love because I wasn't being love. Okay? When you finally, finally fall in love with yourself, the 3D is a very different confirmation. Okay? This person totally mirrors you in 100% you understand this. The mystery is solved between you and the universe. You don't see it as separate. Okay? There's none of this. You stop upholding stories. You stop upholding stories. It's not about circumstances. The circumstances were just there to wake you up so that you can correct your story within and that animates a different circumstance. But there's a part of you that must let go of the old story for your sake and for everybody's sake. And there's a part of you that needs to stop focusing there because you're putting your efforts in the wrong place and should be focused on learning how to master positive thought, on focusing on the lovely things. For example, today I had the best morning, but I spent the whole night sleep learning positive thinking different types of ways of positive being. So when I observe, my, I observe myself sleeping, because I can always see myself no matter what now, because I don't exactly sleep in the same way, I astral project, and I watch myself sleeping in this state where I was literally absorbing everything that was going on in the TV, and then this was creating different images in my head. So simultaneously, I'm seeing these 3D images of what I'm dreaming. I can see this screen, because you know, I, that's how I read minds, except I was reading my own in this state. And it was the coolest, coolest thing ever, right? Because I realized the value of what I was putting in Si simultaneously in that minute because that's what it's like on the astral right but in the in those moments that's exactly what i was witnessing right the power of the content of what i was putting in counted because now my mind was automatically dreaming of lovely things 
And so what happened this morning, I woke up in the best mood, happy as could be, even happier than I normally am. And I kept thinking, wow, all of the things that I was thinking about automatically are things that I desired, yes. And I was in a receptive, happy, happy place. Why? Because at night while I was sleeping, I took advantage of how receptive I was to being programmed and I programmed myself with good content. Hence why I woke up in a great mood. Again, what you put in determines the quality of your life. The people show up determining on what you are saying inside of yourself. That story, if that story is not loving towards self, you will find every degree of that outside of you, but you're in for a very rude awakening because you have to remember if it's common sense, if you are frowning on the inside, the outside world must frown back at you. It is not your job to keep driving yourself mad, asking why of causation when you are that. You are first cause of every effect in your life. Time to stop crying about what they did to you. Time to drop all of those stories. Time to let that go for the love of God. Let that go. Release those stories. And it's time to work on ones that work for you. Because, see, God never lied to you. God said in the beginning was the word. So in the beginning is the story you are telling. And the word was with God. And the word was with you because God can't be divided. Okay? And the word is God. That means the story you are telling and your thoughts that you see outside in the external world are one thing. Therefore, you are the answer you are looking for. What you seek is seeking you. You must be what you want to receive. You're not checking out there for them to validate that for you. They will conform. They conform and conform, confirm your inner state of being simply by if you listen and pay attention, these people will say, only the best things that you want to hear because they can only mirror back how you are being. That is the beauty of the system. That's why when you understand it, when you truly, truly get it, you cannot help but be loved because you know what? That's the only thing that has ever existed. It's the only constant. Everything else, love reflects back for you so you can see what you're being in the moment. In love is love reflected. The entire universe becomes as you are. That's the answer. When you get that and you go back and you participate in the world after that, that is a thing of beauty. Because this person has already been liberated. They don't care if they live or die. They have zero attachment to this world. And yet they choose to stay to teach this shortcut. They choose to stay to say, listen, the answer you are seeking is not out there. It's right here. And let me tell you, I can serve as a living testament. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. But, sorry guys. Sorry, still getting interrupted by a phone call. But my point, okay, again, love is your answer. It's the only thing that you will ever, 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 ever need in life because that's all that's being reflected. That's it. When you get turned on by you, for you, 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 you don't even tolerate things that don't work. You enforce your boundaries. You expect these things to be. And then the rest of the world conforms. And when I say that conforms, it conforms. You're not looking for it. So I have a friend. I'll use her as an example. I have a friend who used to sit here and affirm, my person loves me. My person calls me. My person, you know, whatever. My person can be anybody. But spent hours and hours affirming this. And it didn't even feel good. But here's the problem with this approach. That's why I said you don't swim all the way around the lake to get back to the same source origin point, right? Here's what's wrong with this approach. The fact that you are affirming 
that my person will call me, my person will prioritize me, all of this stuff means that you currently right now believe the exact opposite. So that's what must appear in the 3D. Now what you're doing is you're affirming this over and over again until you enter the other part. But if you don't understand that's how that works, okay, you are going to work harder than needs be because you're going to keep looking out there in affirming what's out there without understanding that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You are affirming to convince yourself so that out there then becomes as you are. That's the shortcut. That's the understanding. That's the only reason you're affirming. But if you don't have that kind of fortitude, you're going to see the difference. Okay. You're going to work a lot harder. Okay. Now I told her to switch that approach. And instead she started flirting with herself in the mirror. She started calling herself beautiful. She wasn't doing it for anybody else. She was doing it for her sense, for her to feel good, but she would wink at herself, you know, she would smile and she would, she would say, Hey, sexy, you look so beautiful today, whatever. You know, she said, she would say these things in the mirror just to herself, just to make herself feel better. This was her thing. Okay. Now what happened? Okay. I'll tell you what happened. Okay. The same person that she always wanted to hear these things from all of a sudden started saying them a lot more automatically just became as they are. Okay. What else happened? Well, all these gentlemen out of the blue, you know, they would go out of their way to try and open the door for her or, or, you know, say these things out of the blue. She would hear the very same words that she had said in the mirror. She would see them except now 3d is confirming and confirming to what she said you see you prove this from application but that's the reason that you have to love yourself because that's the only way to see through it once you see through the constant you're like oh so I guess I guess to settle this argument I can say yes both are true but only one leads to a balanced union who is able to understand and bridge the gap in the mystery where the two become one, which is the point. You don't want to be in a union where you still feel these two people are separate. That's not love. That's not how you solve the puzzle. No, when you bridge the gap and you realize that bodies are illusions and you realize that the two souls are exactly one in the same whole, they're both whole. They don't need each other to exist. But when one reflects the other back perfectly and one can finally see the other in themselves and they bridge that mystery, they will notice that what's applicable in a love relationship is applicable in the universe as a whole. So it totally bridges the divide and you finally understand you are the universe and that scripture is telling the truth. And that is the greatest gift in the world that anyone can ever offer you. But that divide is not, that, that's not bridged any other way. That divide doesn't, it doesn't go away by checking out there for confirmation. No, that divide goes away when you yourself become what you seek. And it mirrors you back effortlessly and you realize that it wasn't about out there. But what a bonus now that what you are being is now being reflected back and you realize that scripture was telling the truth. That's a bonus. It's huge. You, you can say, wow, I am literally alive in the word and, and I, you understand the mystery of God. And you realize there is nothing else. You are in a relationship with yourself. You are here to master that. And when you do, that is mirrored throughout. That is the shortcut. So I guess the answer to that question is simple. I guess the reason everybody's fighting is, although yes, you can manifest people, okay? You'll never be happy. I've done it. I've done it. I run from those people. I didn't like it. I felt suffocated from from people like that, that bent over backwards, trying to prove they were worthy. Like it did, it didn't work for me. It, it suffocates me in a way. And I, I in, in, and I need distance from that. 
feeling. Okay, that's how I was because I did not recognize myself. And since I did not recognize myself, my union was always unbalanced. It was never something I could appreciate. Okay, so I'm not disagreeing with coaches when they say, yes, they can manifest people. Yes, you can. I did it all the time, my whole life, right? But I wasn't living and I certainly wasn't letting love in. No, I, I, I saw the opposite of that. That's not love. To see love, to recognize love, to know that you're love. That type of mastery comes from being it. That's how you solve the puzzle. That's when you realize there is nothing else. And that's when you can say, oh, wow, there is nothing but God. And I am that. It's everybody's universal truth. The answer to everything and we are not conditioned to love because when we look at the mirror what do we do sometimes we smile at it and we like how it smiles back and sometimes we frown at it we scowl at it and as soon as it scowls back we're like oh how dare you do that to me and that's when you get sucked into the drama that's not actually happening because the only thing going on is our story animating the outside world. They're one and the same thing. That's why God was very specific. I said, I in the beginning is the word. The word is with me and the word is me. In other words, there's no division. All of it's God. So if you can use that shortcut, that little key to see yourself in every single human being, you'll have a totally different awareness. Because remember what I said, when you don't like someone, you're not rejecting them. You're rejecting your concept of your own experience. You don't know that, but that's what you're doing. However, you're doing this based on your own experience because you know cause and effect of other experiences. So this is how your experiences are being shaped. This is how you're choosing. But behind the veil, the truth is all of the bodies are illusions. Every single last one, they're all technically you in every dimension. It's the same soul looking at itself from all different angles. So if you know that it's you on display and you know that love is the answer, why not be that? Why not do that automatically? That's your answer. That's how you'll always be prioritized. You'll always be loved. You'll, you'll, you'll always hear from your, from your lover. They're, they'll always say, you were on my mind. I, I love you. I miss you. I see you everywhere. That person's trying to tell you they love you. I see you everywhere. If you give someone that honor, you're making them your universe, but understand you and the universe are the same thing. That person, you and that person are the same thing. There is no difference, there's only God. That's it. So honor the people in your life and see the best in them because it's you. You are only taking from your own experience when you don't value that experience. Think about it. When it comes up, it's going to be a trigger. It has to be because you're the one detracting value from that experience. Even if it's painful, if you understood this, okay, even if it was a painful experience, okay, you learn what not to do. And if you learn what not to do, that is still valuable information. Yes. Yes, Steph, absolutely. Absolutely, you're saying which is who you really are. Love, God, the universe, infinite intelligence. Exactly, that's what you really are. There is nothing else. To imply there is something else implies that there is something other than God. There isn't. You are that. The one expressing as the many and the only way off the karmic wheel is to condition yourself to love. When you condition yourself to love, you'll show up differently over time. That goes out into the universe and that's exactly what you receive. And sooner or later, what happens is the coolest thing.
okay? The coolest thing, I'll tell you. You will feel love from every person you meet. You'll just walk into the room and people, and the ones that don't, you could care less. You could care less. You don't feel it at all. They're like little gnats. You don't feel it. But you send them the same love regardless. You send them the same love regardless. It has no effect on your life whatsoever. Whether someone appreciates or doesn't appreciate you or appeared to appreciate you. No, because you know what's on display is the story that you're telling inside and you're fascinated by what you're seeing, but you're watching yourself on the screen be every character at once. And it's the most fascinating movie and you're present and you're playing your part, but you're just having a ball being yourself. When you can do that, it's a turn on. That's the magnetic force that you're looking for. The kind of thing that, that you can't explain, but you can't tear yourself away from a person. You just want to get lost in their eyes, right? You just want to get lost in that, right? That feeling, okay? You turn that on in yourself first, and then everywhere else it's magnified. That's your shortcut. That's your shortcut. It's your effortless shortcut. Love's your answer. You know, I'm not denying that you cannot, if you don't love yourself, like I said, I'm not denying you will, you will meet people out there that may, that go out of their way to try and help you love yourself. They have to appear because everything exists and everything is possible. But understand the difference between the two. The unbalanced union will never bring you joy. But when you can look at someone and recognize yourself in them and you treat them with love and respect and kindness and you have that same love and respect and kindness for everything and over time, wherever you go, you are well received and you understand it's the shortcut and you will notice that people go out of their way to do this, this becomes the norm and it's not a conceited way of being, it's not even, it's a, it's a respect that you're given, an automatic respect because you're respectful of other people. You're simply receiving what you're being. So there, you know, can you do it? Sure. Absolutely. But if you're really going to live, if you're really going to allow the vulnerability of letting someone in, if you're really going to enjoy the union and want to know what it's like to be treated like a queen in every instance, all the time, and have that be the normal, or treated like a king in every instance because that's your normal, you must become what you seek. But it ain't out there. Out there simply becomes as you are. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's the answer. Your answer is always you are in a relationship with yourself. How you judge the mirror, every single story that you tell, every time you 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 act as if you can lose someone, you will experience that. You're creating it from within yourself and then experiencing out. So you will play it out if that's what you choose to do. But someone who knows the light, recognizes its own reflection, doesn't have the fear of losing someone because they understand that everybody is their body and that they're looking at their own reflection. And so they see this person everywhere. And what happens is then the universe starts showing up with confirmation. Like your person's name will be in the back of a truck somewhere, everywhere, or your, <laughs> it just starts, it just starts screaming at you from every direction. Even if the name's not common in this world, it'll, it'll appear everywhere. Or like, you know, it's the same thing with like a pink Jeep. You want to see a pink Jeep, suddenly there's like pink Jeeps everywhere. 
you know, it, 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 it happens because of your focus. But when you understand that your story is what's animating everything out there, you have a very different sense of power. So then you want to start working with your mind. But you do want to apply these things. If you're somebody who's very um, physically oriented and feels they must do, 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 do something, okay, if you're that type of person, then at bare minimum, let your efforts match your mental efforts so that you can maximize what you're doing. Because if working hard were the recipe to success, then the most impoverished countries should be wealthy, right? The people that work in fields, I'm thinking about the people that used to work for my grandmother, right? The most impoverished people that work the farmlands, okay? And that maybe work for a small stipend a day, two meals, maybe a place to stay if they're farmhands. These are the type of people that, used to, that, that my grandmother used to employ, right? They work hard, hard for a few dollars. So the recipe is not in working harder, but working smarter. So if you're that type of person that finds their, their satisfaction in doing, at least match your mental efforts so that you become the Michael Jordans of the world. Remember, the reason he played like a dream is because he played in his head first and then he physically played the game. So if you're a hardworking individual, okay, imagine your success first. Do not expect the worst. Train your mind to what is lovely so that when you show up to work, your success is guaranteed. Because everything is technically found within and everything will be reflected exactly as you are. But it's definitely not out there. Your answer is love, but it's in loving what you do that you don't work a day in your life. So think about that. Everything, the answer is love. Your financial success, your romantic success, your your personal, interpersonal relationships, your if you're if you decide to work for someone, if you have co-workers, if you if you own a company, it doesn't matter. All of these relationships will be reflected back at you. And if you are not in love and accepting of who you are, you're gonna reject these aspects unknowingly, not understanding that there is no one else out there. It's your story that you're making. You must choose to make those stories loving. That makes you the desirable thing. So I hope that helps in understanding the question and also remind people to make it about yourself. Make it about yourself. Half of you, if you meditated more, your mind would not be driving you insane. Some of you have these what you call bad days when you fall off the wagon because you've been practicing your state and you've been practicing your state and then you fall off the wagon, right? And you have these bad days. Okay, this is a person that doesn't meditate because now your brain's in control, not you. Your brain's your servant. You guys need to make your ego your personal assistant. Not something you go to war with. Your personal assistant that is in charge of bringing you all that is lovely and dear. Put your servant to work for you. You do not work for the universe. The universe works for you. The problem is until we understand that there is nothing else out there that you are that within, you're going to get stuck in this limbo state. But if you, if you start practicing this, you start applying this, it changes everything. It changes everything. And what happens when you don't need anything? What happens? Everything comes to you. It's like a, it's like a vortex. <laughs> it comes to you and your dream woman appears out of nowhere or your dream guy appears out of nowhere or your financial success appears out of nowhere. 
suddenly, if you like to cook all of your life, you're suddenly recognized and given awards, okay? You know, this is dependent on what you love. I had the best testimonial today. Someone landed a huge contract for himself, huge, 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 but he wasn't, it wasn't the amount or the huge amount or the payoff or any of that. It, that was huge for him. That's not what he was tickled pink by. What he was tickled pink by was that he's been trying to do this for nine years on his own, working hard without applying this. And after applying this, this is why I'm telling you this story, where the hard worker and the mental efforts go together. After applying this and doing this, he landed his biggest success ever, 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 right? And he wrote to say, it works, Cindy. It works. The visualization, the, the, um, the affirmations, the going to bed with the right mindset, the, the persistence, it works. That's what he was tickled pink by. That's what his testimony was. Not the amount, not the big, huge award, the success. No, no, no. He was tickled pink by finally. And now it'll appear like he's an overnight sensation, right? An overnight success or something like that. No, what happened was his finally his efforts were matched. And that's a biohack. Use it. Match your efforts. There's only you in the equation. But remember, build it in here first, then enter your state. Be the Michael Jordans of these worlds. That's how you become these people. You know, if you play an instrument or you sing, I need you to be singing in your sleep. Like that's how, you, you, you understand this, this type of desire? Because that's what then becomes your outside world. You must recognize yourself and the things that you love then get magnified out as far as the eye can see. 3D will appear as you are. It is the most beautiful, breathtaking, like, I can't even begin to put into words the beauty of recognizing the Word of God as your own self and realizing you are the universe you are the infinite you are that okay so please please remember the answer is always going to be love because the simple thing is once you become that then the outside world becomes as you are that's the shortcut but you have to apply these things and remember you're dealing only with yourself respect and be kind to that love that all right, so I've babbled long enough. I'm sorry I took so long, but that's my answer. The answer, the reason why people fight so much, the short, long short of that is, yes, you can manifest someone. It will be an unbalanced union. It's truly in balance when you are love because you, be, you see what you are being. And when you see what you are being, that's what you receive all around. And it's in balance and the union. You'll recognize yourself and the other human being you know, be a happy place, okay? But if we do not and we maintain the separation, then we're not being loving. Therefore, we're not going to recognize and that's where the imbalance comes in. And that's usually what you're here to work out. That's why I said it's the most amusing show when you know the light recognizes its own shadow because now the light and the shadow work as one unit. Versus when the light doesn't know that it's its own shadow and then argues with its shadow left and right, back and forth, back and forth over whose perspective is correct. And neither, because they're both right depending on which view you have. If you're here or you're here, each has a unique perspective that's true to them. Right? <laughs> that's the illusion there, right? So again... It, there's no point in arguing because every perspective is right, right? Everything exists. Depends on what they're seeing. <laughs> and so um, the last thing I'll leave you with is peace comes from not asking why of causation. Stop asking. The question and the answer doesn't make sense, okay? Accept that you are first cause 
and use this to your advantage. Stop wasting time asking why of causation and torturing yourself because a lot of times your experiences are, are ones and dones. But if they happen a year ago, you shouldn't still be reliving them. You should have moved on from there. Okay? Ones and dones. Understand how you're defining your experience. This will help you in life. It will truly help you in life. Okay? Be love. You'll receive love. Simple. Shortcut. Yeah. Love you guys. All right.